It's September 9, 2025, and I'm tracking now Tropical Storm Kiko as it continues to move north of the Hawaiian Islands. So far, the impacts from Kiko have been minimal across Hawaii and will continue to be on the minimal side of things, including some large surf, a little bit of rain, and also some light winds. That's all we're expecting from Kiko, but things could get interesting as the storm passes over the next few days. The main impacts from Kiko, of course, will be the waves where we could see upwards of 10, even 15 foot waves, especially for the north and eastern facing beaches of Hawaii. Eventually, the storm system, as it pulls away, the waves will start to calm down, but there still will be a few days of rough surf to follow where you could see 8 to 10 foot waves even into Friday's forecast. Of course, we have a high surf advisory because of the waves that are expected as we head through the next day and a half here for parts of the Hawaiian Islands, the main islands of Kauai and Oahu will see some of the higher wave heights. So that's why there's a high surf warning. And also Maui has a high surf advisory as well. So we are expected still to see some higher waves here, but other locations, including the big island, have been removed from the high surf advisory. Here's a look at the wind gust forecast over the next few days, taking the strongest winds well to the north of the Hawaiian Islands. In fact, Kiko's actually slowed down the trade winds, so there's actually lighter winds than expected. But as we head through the next few days, the trade winds will build back in. In fact, could get a little stronger than normal as the pressure gradient normalizes, but we will eventually see the winds start to calm down into next week. But through the weekend, we could still see some gusts upwards of 25 to 30 miles per hour, especially in the higher terrain behind Kiko as the trade winds start to come back. So there goes the stronger winds from Kiko off to the north, and then the trade winds take over with wind gusts upwards of 25 to even 30 miles per hour heading into the weekend. Here's the rainfall forecast from Kiko. Notice how the heaviest stuff is even farther north than the center of the storm. That's where all the moisture is right now on the north and east side of the tropical storm. Sometimes this does happen, especially when there's a lot of dry air around that tends to train in on the west and southwest side of the storm wherever it's traveling so that is where hawaii is so we're not expecting to see widespread rain but there will be a slight increase in shower activity as the storm passes so you get a little bit of rain but not quite enough to quench the drought across parts of the islands so this is the drought monitor across the islands and you can see several locations still in severe drought so the rain would be much welcomed but unfortunately with the current track of kiko most of the heavy stuff will remain off to the north which is somewhat of a good thing because if it all came down at once, we'd be talking about flash flooding, but we could see some light showers still, especially on the north and east side of the mountain ranges. So there will be a little bit of rain, but not quite enough to tamper down the drought in the area. And the reason why some of the rain showers will only stay on the north and east side of the mountains is what's called the orographic effect. Since we're not seeing the storm over the islands, the rain showers will be basically trapped on the north and east side of the mountains as the warm and moist air rises up the mountains, cools and condenses to form those showers. And on the other side of the mountains, it dries out. So that will prevent shower activity from forming as that air warms up and dries out. So we could see a slight, very slight increase in potential wildfire risk over the next few days, but really nothing substantial or notable, which is a good thing. So we're not seeing quite the effects we had two years ago, really nearly as close, but still something to keep an eye on. But on the eastern side of the mountains and northern side, at least there will be some rain available from the passing storm. We're also tracking another area in the eastern Pacific that could develop over the next few days. There's an 80% chance of seeing a tropical system within the next five days west of Mexico here. This will probably take the same track as Lorena, so we'll keep a close eye on this over the next several days here for the southern U.S. as whatever moisture develops out of this system may be deposited into the southwest and southern plains once again, so something to keep a close eye on. And the wind gust forecast does have a storm develop by Thursday. It looks like we'll potentially have a tropical depression and then tropical storm. It will track off to the north and then we will see where it goes from there. Over in the Atlantic, things are still very quiet, even though there are a few waves trying to come in off of Africa. The conditions just aren't that great for storms to develop over the next several days. There's a lot of dry air and wind shear aloft, so things are somewhat tampered down, but will eventually start to pick up as we head towards the end of the month. It looks like the ingredients will start to come to play for hurricanes to develop again. Hurricane season kind of waxes and wanes here or there as we head through the season on and off. 
But this is the peak of the entire season, really, this week. So we'll see if the hurricane season is back building and we start to see a few more storms develop over the next week to two weeks here. I do think that'll be the case as we head towards the end of the month of September. Before we move on to talk about the continental U.S., I wanted to touch base on our new weather app that'll be coming out in the next couple of weeks. Storm Chance is a impact-based weather app. We'll be covering major weather events from blizzards, hurricanes, to severe weather, but the main focus will be on your local area. We'll have hyper-local video updates for your location. Wherever you're traveling, you can select different areas to get different video forecasts. In addition to your local forecast via weather data and weather forecasting, which is highly accurate. But if you have any questions on this app, feel free to leave a comment below or reach out through our website. Now we head over to the continental U.S., where we have several areas of active weather going on. One of those areas is Florida, where we have some slow-moving showers and storms. These storms may be capable of producing some flash flooding, so we're going to keep a close eye on this area, and it could be an event over the next few days, as well as some showers and storms working their way through the plains that will be on the strong to severe side. This could be a multi-day event as well for parts of the plains. We also have some shower activity in the upper Midwest, but this is not expected to have anything notable associated with it, just some rain across the area. Now we head over to the West Coast, where there's a slow-moving low-pressure system producing showers. These showers will have the capability of producing localized flash flooding in certain areas, so we'll keep a close eye on this location, as we will have a few days of this risk for some places. So in anticipation for the heavy rains from the slow moving low, the National Weather Service has issued a flash flood watch for parts of Oregon. This includes Bend, Oregon for the potential of some heavy rains in this area that could lead to flooding. So this is an area we'll be watching closely over the next few days. If you do live in this location, make sure you pay attention to alerts, have those emergency alerts on on your cell phone so you are getting those warnings in case of flash flooding occurring in your area. As you can see, we have excessive rainfall risk for parts of the area here, including the flash flood warned area. So make sure to be weather aware in these locations as we head through tomorrow. And even on Thursday, we could still have this risk in the area. As you can see in the forecast model here, those showers and storms are being produced through tomorrow morning and into the afternoon on Wednesday and pretty much hanging out over parts of Oregon and Idaho, even parts of Nevada. So locations that see these storms hang out is where we could have that potential for some localized flash flooding. And here's that rainfall risk. As you can see, the heavy rainfall in parts of California and Oregon. That'll be the focus as we head through tomorrow and eventually shifting to Idaho on Thursday. We also have an excessive rainfall risk for Florida that includes the Miami area as we have slow moving storms popping up along sea breeze fronts for the next few days and a stalled frontal boundary nearby. So we could see some isolated flash flooding in certain locations. Here's a look at that rainfall forecast through Thursday for parts of Florida. Of course, Florida can handle a little more rain than parts of the Mountain West that are typically much drier than Florida, but this is still some heavy rainfall totals for the area, upwards of five inches possible for some locations. And this is the future radar forecast through the next several hours and into tomorrow for Florida. You can see the heavy rainfall, showers and storms still continuing through today and then picking up again as we head into Wednesday's forecast and could possibly have another round on Thursday. But tomorrow will certainly be an active day across parts of the state. And we have that severe weather continuing for parts of the plains. This goes in eastern Colorado, western Kansas, parts of Oklahoma and Texas. That slight risk of severe weather could see some strong gusty winds and some hail and maybe a very slim chance of an isolated tornado, but the main risk is going to be the wind and hail. And here's a look at that forecast for parts of the plains. You can see that cluster of showers and storms working through, eventually becoming a complex and heading towards Texas. So we'll be seeing a chance of that and then maybe more storms as we head through tomorrow. We also have a major pattern change in the forecast over the next few days as we will eventually see the pattern flip here and hot temperatures work their way back into the forecast, especially for the Midwest. So over the next couple of weeks, we'll be seeing that heat build in across parts of the country. And we are talking temperatures back into the 80s and maybe even 90s for parts of the Midwest after seeing frost in some locations. So a big change there. And that heat will eventually make its way over to the East Coast slowly. But we will potentially see more days in the 80s before summer wraps up here across parts of the Northeast. But definitely some hotter days ahead and could see a week plus of the heat in the forecast. 
So looking ahead, we'll be tracking a few things over the next few days. The monsoonal rains return to parts of the west, and that's we'll be watching that chance of flooding in places like Oregon. Florida will continue to see heavy rain across the area there. We also have the tropics heating back up. Specifically, the Atlantic will start to see some activity, especially towards the end of the month. And we'll track this pattern change as the heat builds in once again after some cooler days, unseasonably cool in some locations over the past week. We'll have updates on all these things as we head over the next several days.